Uh, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, right, we're going to take a batch of questions from here. You've already got some hands up. The chap uh, with glasses there at the back first, and then the chap in the green jumper, and the chap in the stripy jumper. Great. Thank you again. Very, very good presentation. Certainly reinforces a lot of the points of the strategic case. Uh, but as you all probably know, there's a five case model that Treasury tends to look to to evaluate these infrastructure schemes. And I feel like we're falling over at the second hurdle. I think, the, again, the presentation reinforces the strategic reasons. But the second one, the economic case, is all about value for money. So they're going to want to know journey times. And it's important to get the rerun the modeling, get their numbers. That's important because that's how they use benefits. They don't care about housing anymore. They don't care about jobs anymore. They just care about journey times. And the cost, and one way to offset costs is to find other forms of funding. So what is Lambeth doing, or, or the council doing, to, to explore land value uplift, other ways of capturing funding to support the scheme, maybe pitching in a bit to, to bring down that, that BCR? OK. Um, chap. Chap in the green jumper in front of you there, and other people around. Uh, there, thank you. Ladies. I also just want to say what a brilliant presentation that was, and the thing that it does, which has repeatedly not been done, is begin to make the case. Um, on that point, uh, it's really great to see a politician and an official from the council here and um, putting their weight in behind making the case, because perhaps I feel like you've, you've failed on doing that in the past, so I'd really like to know what concrete actions you're taking, what commitment you're putting behind it. You've got officials whose job it is to write Treasury Green Book cases, so please use them and please support this with those people who, who can do it. Thank you. OK. Tap, tap next to him on the... Yeah. And then there's a chap over there. And a lady here. Uh, hi there. So uh, my name is Stephen Colborn, and I'm a railway blogger on uh, rail investment matters. Um, I came to a previous meeting here. Um, so it's great to be back at Streatham. It's great to see the campaign moving forward. And it's great to see so many assembly members on the stage. Um, so I've done some work on the Northern Line and the current route through Ballum, and my estimates suggest that actually the current route will make the Northern Line worse at Ballum, not better. And if my numbers are right, and we haven't seen any detail from TfL, if my numbers are right, then it's bonkers going via Ballum. Right? You can't make the Northern Line worse by you know, spending all this money. That's ridiculous. Um, if you change the route of the main Crossrail 2 line to go far Earlsfield, hold on with me, you save about a billion pounds. Now, if you send 20 trains per hour down via Earlsfield to Wimbledon, you have 10 trains an hour spare and those 10 trains an hour could quite easily be routed on a branch via Ballum to Streatham, to terminate in Streatham, or to carry on towards Tooting and back towards Wimbledon, or to carry on towards Mitcham. In other words, if you can move the line away from Ballum and Tooting via Earlsfield, you save a billion pounds, and you can spend that billion pounds to come via Ballum to reach Streatham. Streatham is perfectly achievable on Crossrail 2, I sadly don't think that the route we see on the screen is the achievable route. I think a branch is the only achievable route for Streatham, but okay, it is we'll actually comments. achievable. Okay, all right. Uh, there's a chap over there. <laughs> and then a lady in the front here. Uh, Alex Davies, a former Lib Dem councillor in Streatham. Um, just following on from what the gentleman in the green jumper said about the... Uh, concrete actions that the council can take. We've heard of the need, we've, we've seen the brilliant presentation from Streatham Action, but there is, of course, more the council could do to try and reinforce the business case, and the council spent money trying to do a business case for a high-level station in Brixton. I'd like to see that same level of commitment uh, for Streatham. And secondly, we've got David Joyce uh, here, and I think we need to hear what is being done about the Morrison site opposite, because what we don't want to see is that being developed for something else whilst we're trying to make the case for it to be a crossrail station and development. So can we have a concrete commitment from the council this evening that they will earmark the site for that purpose while we are campaigning for, for the route to be brought here? OK. There's a lady in the front here. Sorry, no, it's the lady at the front. I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> okay, go on. You are there, right. sir. You are uh, there. Uh, thank you. Well, I'm probably one of those who've been living in Stratham over 45 years. 
And I remember there was a plan to connect the tram from Croydon to Stratham, and there was quite possibility uh, during Keith Hill's time that we were talking about, yes, there is a possibility, but what happened to the scheme, we don't know. It, it, certain, it, certain, it, it, it just shelved. So I think that could be, I don't want to deviate from uh, CR2, but I think that this is another way of uh, relieving some pressure in Stratham by connecting with uh, Croydon. Thank okay, you. that's a good question. I'm sure somebody on the panel will be able to answer that. And uh, uh, the lady here. I beg your pardon. Do you want me to stand up? Okay, fine. I could probably shout. Okay, fine. A bit of paper. I'm puzzled as to what happens between now and 2030. This is a long time. It, uh, what, detracts from the possibility of 200,000 houses, improved eco economic circumstances, and does anyone think, or has, has anyone looked at the possibility of smaller buses filling gaps where people are disadvantaged, you know, from Dulwich into or wherever it might be, um, smaller hopper buses going east to west along, across the high road, the A23, and doing something for us now, because I think 14 years is a long time for the situation to go on as it is. Or is there something in the pipeline that they can explain it with? Okay, good question. <laughs> one, one last one from this side. Oh, okay, the chap there with the white shirt. <clears throat> oh, there's been some great points made this evening, but I think one thing we should take away from this meeting is that um, it's obvious that our efforts need to be concentrated on getting to Sadiq and his assistants. All, all this talking is great, but the people who have access to him, to persuade him to change his mind, is what's required. Okay, fine. Can we, uh, can we have slightly shorter contributions from the panel? And I'll take them in the opposite order this time. Sean uh, can start off, but uh, slightly shorter so that we get one more round of questions in. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be really short. Those are, those are all really interesting points, actually. Um, and I think, you know, before I didn't answer the question about the, um, the term, the, the railways orange um, question, and I think you do want everything here. South London needs a network. It needs, it needs the same kind of connectivity that, that the north of London has. And so you should be campaigning for all of it. And, and like I said, there was a, there's a vicious circle when you have fewer passengers because it's rubbish, people then go, well, there's no point in improving it because there's no passengers. The same thing goes, you know, more people will start using public transport, they'll come off the roads, then you have a case for the next bit of public transport. Um, it, it is a virtual, virtuous circle, so keep campaigning for everything, um, but don't be distracted from the first thing while you do it, I think. I, I would say, you know, focus on this because you are doing really well with this campaign um, and get this done and then the next things will follow. You'll have a case for those in, in, a, in sequence, as it were. Thank you. Yes, if I could just address two of the specific questions. I mean, firstly, on can I allocate the Stretton Morrison's uh, site as a location for a station on Cross Rail 2? The, 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 uh, the difficult answer that I, I need to give at this stage is no, um, because it, the first question a planning inspector would ask me at a local plan examination is, is that station deliverable? And I would have to say, well, no, because it's not been safeguarded by Transport for London, it's not been identified in the Cross Rail 2 route. So I'm afraid the first port of call has to be to persuade the mayor um, and his team that Streatham is a viable option for Cross Rail 2. Once we've done that, the site would be safeguarded and we would be able to look at that. The other thing I would say about it is that the opportunity is not just that site, it's also the station itself above station development and other land around the station. So I, I don't think we should just focus on Morrison's Law as a significant opportunity. I, I, I do take the point about value for money. Um, I think it's a very good point. 
um, and I think that would be an area that we would need to work on if we were going to persuade the mayor um, that Stretton could be a viable option. Um, and I think there is more work to do. Um, but as I go back to earlier, we need to start with really making the case about what the potential benefits are and the, num the, the amount of journey time savings that could be made um, and the, the number of passenger um, uh, uh, journeys um, which would be cut down and all of the other transport benefits we've talked about. And at the moment, it, it's really clear to me that they've just not done that analysis. So I'm sure that we could, um, we could really improve the value for money case from where it is at the moment. I'd like to address the um, issue about uh, Lambo's commitment. Now, I can tell you that I've actually spoken to our 11 uh, Labour Stretton councillors and the one Green uh, councillor in, in, in uh, Stretton, and in no uncertain terms, they have given me a clear direction, um, emphatic steer, that they would like to see Lambeth support, promote, and actually fight for the Crosswell to coming to Stratton. I can tell you, if it wasn't for them pushing, pushing me, pushing the council leader, um, we may not be. Uh, I'm, I may have not been here today. Um, and ob obviously, thank you very much for to to um, uh, address an action group for putting it on on my agenda. But I can tell you that as a council, we are committed to promoting this. Your local councillors are the conduit um, um, to provide information to me, and they will tell me the heat that you or your demand is actually causing in the area. So yes, you do have a commitment, but as I've said, I'm looking at things in uh, parallel. There has to be a really good business case, because um, I am a, uh, a pragmatist, um, but I will back you all the way, and I have a job of work to do, and that includes speaking to Val Shawcroft, speaking to you, Flo, and ensuring that the message that we need Crossrail 2 and that we are no longer going to accept being ignored gets through to Sadiq. Yeah, I'll, I'll come on to that. I think um, it's some of the interesting points, the idea about having it as a branch, not a loop, I think it's a very interesting point and that is something in the representations we can make to Val and Sadiq is, is a good option to put forward. And, I get a lot of this across London and with um, experts in transport with their different plans on maps and stuff, but I think that sounds really interesting idea and you've obviously done a lot of calculations behind it and I think that should feed in to our meeting that hopefully we will get to secure with Val. I think the council coming behind it perhaps doing a letter as well, I think that will be really powerful as well and I know all council leaders have been talking to the new mayor so it would be good for it to be on the list um, of, of your leader in terms of, um, of, of lobbying the mayor. Um, I think um, that we also need to make sure that there are short-term measures, you're absolutely right, and I think there will be an opportunity coming up because the word that I've been getting from Transport for London is they are looking at taking out some buses from central London, reducing, for example, Oxford Street by 40%, the buses going up and down there, and looking at moving them to, to outer London or suburban London, so I think there is an opportunity there to potentially increase buses in this area in the short term. But actually we need, you know, multi-pronged strategy here. We need to look at things like buses, but actually we need to improve the train services. We've talked about the devolution agenda, which seems to have slightly gone off the boil compared to when we had the Conservative there um, earlier in the year. We need to get that back on track. And then we need to also look to secure Crossrail too. And I think if we can work together on that, secure a meeting and at least get Transport for London looking at this, I, th I think that is a really, really good start. Um, with regard to the first point that was made by the gentleman about the, uh, the economic case um, and what's Lambeth doing to um, fund uh, land value uplifting, um, I would say that all comes down to the amount of economic regeneration that can be uh, brought about. Uh, and on that, uh, Stratton does extremely well. In turn, I know nobody on the panels, but they've put uh, numbers down on the table tonight. 
but I would just like to say that at the meeting we had with Crossrail 2, the initial numbers cited as to economic regeneration of ability in Ballam and Tooting was, I think I'm right in saying, 300 for Ballam and 600 new homes in uh, Tooting. Uh, well, the Lambeth plan already projects something like a thousand new homes and there's plus 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 beyond that if we were to get Crossrail 2 and the uplift on uh, land values that everybody would benefit from that would, would help the economic case very strongly I sense. Coming on to the, uh, uh, the, the, the Earlsfield option, I hate to put too much of a damper on that, I would say that it does involve um, a northern line connection thereby, south of the river, being only on um, a, uh, a spur line and not on the main line. And that, I think, is a no-no right from the word go because Crossrail 2 and TfL say it's a sine qua non of the whole route. If it doesn't alleviate loading on the northern line, it's not going to go that route. So that might be an option further down the line if all else fails, but I don't think it's an option for today. And my final point um, is about uh, how can we earmark the Morrison site. I think I'm right in saying that there is a, a ratings revaluation that awaited in October for all businesses, isn't there, David? Um, and I think I heard that that means that a number of people who are interested in the site at Morrison's are perhaps backing off until that date in October when they know precisely what uh, rate values will, will, will be on the space that they would acquire. Thank you. Just, um, I'll come in on that last point um, because it sticks in my mind. This morning, Caroline and a few others of us were out in Oxford Street doing a site visit looking at pedestrianisation and the chair of, um, I can't remember his name, of New West End Company was talking about the fact that maybe it's time for us to pause on um, the rateable recalculations on the back of everything. I, I, know you mentioned, I know you said we shouldn't mention Brexit, but on the back of that, I think it's something that a number of um, businesses maybe doing a joint call to the Mayor or Treasury to say, actually, is this the time for us to look at that? So, you know, that those, those discussions are ongoing. In terms of um, some of your comments, in terms of what, what have we as politicians been doing, I have met with Michelle Dixon, and um, again, just to echo Jenny's comments, and this isn't by no means party political, but again, you know, since I've been in post, the Stratton councils have belonged me so hard around this. So again, this is on the top of my agenda. So I have raised this with Michelle Dixon when I met with her. And um, I think, again, like I said, you know, I, I will be taking a number of notes tonight to feed back into her, um, into her and then cross rail too in terms of, again, pushing on that case. I think the, the gentleman, Stephen, the, the point you made around make, maybe looking at that loop in terms of, you know, again, it, all the costs of cross rail too are not there yet. So this could be the proposal to say, actually, you know, once we look at revised business case, could this alleviate some of the, um, you know, the cost in terms of actually making this reality? In terms of the time scale for this, and again, my, my understanding, and when I met with Michelle, she said that the revised business case will be going forward by the end of this year. So again, it's not finished yet, and um, in terms of the next stage would be proposals to submit a hybrid bill next by 2017. To, to government. So there's an important piece of work that um, Lord Adonis is still doing as well. He's the other part of this jigsaw, which I think we should mention as well. So there's an, so it's not just about Sadiq, it's about the work that um, something called the Infrastructure Commission are looking at. So they've been tasked with looking at Crossrail 2 in terms of bringing all that, um, in terms of you know how it's going to be funded, what levy is going to be taxed on businesses, what levy is going to be taxed on us as Londoners what levy is going to come from the TFL and public funding. So all of that still has to be around. So essentially it's about saying, because you haven't completed on this, can you please look at Stratton again? You know, that's the arts that we should be looking at. And, and you know, that's what I'm going to be doing. 